Are we tired of talking about Shea Moisture yet? I definitely am tired of talking about hair in general. If you were following me when South by Southwest was going on, you guys know that I was having like near daily breakdowns about the natural hair conversations and hair innovation and all of that. But as tired as I am of these topics, they unfortunately have to keep coming up because there are people who are out there who are just doing horribly in their marketing communication to multicultural people, to black people, black women in particular, um, and those of us with multi-textural hair. So who am I and what qualifies me to speak on these things other than the fact that I have this, you know, luscious mane of a uh, kinky, coily hair, you know, ABC, 3B, whatever <laughs> the hell the grading systems are. Um, shout out to Oyen Handmade for my honey hemp conditioner and hairdo that uh, brought you this style today. But I am a cultural strategist. My name is Denitria Lewis, first of all, if you don't know me. And I'm a cultural strategist, so um, I disrupt hidden bias to help brands achieve cultural mindfulness. And what that really means is that I help marketers of all races, creeds, colors, and backgrounds assess what their cultural blind spots are. And basically, I help brands to not inadvertently be racist. So since we're going to talk about Shea Moisture, we're going to talk about Total Market, and I'm definitely not going to keep you guys too long. just want to get some of my thoughts out here, and I wrote some uh, notes and things I want to share with you guys. I want to get the internet myths out the way first because it's a lot of loud and wrong out here on these inner streets. So number one. Um, as some of you know, and if those of you who don't, Shea Moisture released an ad um, called Hair Hate, well, under the campaign of Hair Hate, and it featured one woman who appeared to be either a mixed black or Latina woman with um, flowing curly hair, and then there were three other white women, one with a redhead, and then the other were blonde, uh, straight, or a wavy textured hair. This set the internet ablaze. I'm not going to go too deeply in that. Links will be in the text of the video. But what I need people to know first and foremost is that Shea Moisture did actually release an ad that featured African American women and their perspectives about a month or so before the currently shelved hair hate video that's getting all this internet ire. So that's one of the things that we just have to get out the way from the very beginning. Um, the second thing is Bank Capital, Mitt Romney. <laughs> I am so sick of this rumor, like it is a thorn in my side. Mitt Romney stepped away from Bain Capital as a principal figurehead years and years ago. Like former uh, Governor Deval Patrick, who's a black man, he was instrumental in bringing Sundial to Bain. So we'll talk more on that later, that particular VC investment. Uh, one of the third things I want to get out the way is that Yes, Shea Moisture does have a number of white women in various marketing positions. Um, but as we all know, gossip and bullshit travel much faster and more attractively than the truth does online. So even though that may be true about white women who have uh, executive marketing positions at Shea Moisture, there are in fact a number of black women who also work behind the scenes on the brand. And the brand is still um, primarily owned by two black people. And we all know their history. So the fourth thing I want to get out the way is that VaynerMedia, who was helmed by Gary V. A lot of folks, you know, know him through his um, online videos, Ask Gary V. They are the agency that is responsible for the ad execution. So this is what we can assume that Shea Moisture's marketing brief and Shea Moisture's final sign off to the work that VaynerMedia produced. So, advertisers, right off the top, let me tell you something far and wide. Let Shea Moisture, Nivea, and Pepsi, like let their recent missteps be your guide. When you are speaking to multicultural audiences, Total Market is not always your friend. Like, Shea Moisture has a history of social media missteps, and that predates any perceived whitewashing via their venture capital investments, 
Um, they have always considered their products to be for everyone. And if you are a loyal fan of the brand, if you're a fan of Nubian Heritage, um, they've always considered their products to be first addressing a specific pain point, a specific brand efficacy, and then that leads into why you would select a specific product of theirs to use. So even Nubian, Nubian Heritage, which was one of the first fair trade brands to even make it into Whole Foods, that's not where people of color were primarily buying Shea Moisture products. So what's really very wrong about the hair hate campaign is that it just has absolutely no synergy. It's not that white people use the products or that they're trying to attract uh, additional um, target base. It seems like there were two completely separate spots that not only speak to different target segments, but it effectively others black women, which is their core demographic. Let's just call a spade a spade. And that is just a no, 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 no. Word to Georgina on that, like advertisers, I beg you to come out of the sunken place. So brands can speak to multiple targets at once effectively. I've been in advertising for 15 years at top general market shops and at multicultural shops. We do it all the time. The nature of digital marketing is that it almost always divorces your marketing message from its original intent. So that's why you need to have a cohesive digital marketing strategy. A lot of the marketing pain associated with these spots could have really been alleviated by a better laid out social and digital implementation, a number of minor creative tweaks, and that definitely could have set this on the right path as opposed to how everything ended up in shambles um, this week. But let's talk about the agency's role in this. I know a lot of people out there love Gary V. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not one of those people. You know, his entire shtick to me is just a role that he's playing. It reeks of privilege and you know, so when you have individuals who consistently and ardently and loudly ape black culture and black cool for views, but they don't really have any skin in the game, they don't have any affinity or even investment in the culture, your result is agencies that have poor multicultural representation and they have questionable diversity. So I found myself many times given, you know, spots you know, and giving folks that, oh no, baby, what is you doing face because they tout really tired cliches about hustle as gospel. You know, so I can understand Shea Moisture wanting to cross the aisle and I can also definitely respect the real hustle that it took to go from the streets of Harlem and street vendors and streetcar community sales only to becoming, again, a brand that is represented in Whole Foods and as well as big box and drugstore retailers. But you can't effectively do that with spots that look like maybe it's an ad for white people disguised as an ad for black people pretending to be an ad for progressive thinking people. Like what is that? It feels wildly opportunistic and above all it's alienating to your core. So if your agency can't guide you on that then maybe you picked the wrong agency. You know, and you definitely have your own cultural blind spots to tend to as well. So those are some of the main things that I want to get across about this entire debacle. Um, advertisers have to be much more selective and much more nuanced when they're picking agencies and consultants and freelancers and um, even their internal staff to work on their brands. If you are speaking to target segments that you are either not familiar with or you haven't done your proper research, you can't just, you know, fly out there all willy-nilly. You need to have the proper insight. You have to approach certain consumer segments with a certain level of nuance. And you can't speak to them like everybody else. I mean, we're still having this conversation when Tom Burrell said years ago that black people are not dark-skinned white people. And that was 40, 50 years ago. Like, why is this still a conversation in advertising? Why are we still having these same issues pop up? You know, it gets to the point where you think that, honestly, advertisers don't care. Um, and that's another day, another 
blog post, video post, or whatever you want to call it. I definitely, I wish Shea Moisture the best. I don't think that they're going to, you know, they're not going to go away from this. They still have good products. They haven't changed over time. Um, I just think that they're going to have to be much, much smarter about how they place their advertising in the future. And some of the agencies that are working on the business are going to have to be much smarter about the type of work that they're putting out as well because um, the brands aren't going to be the only ones that get dragged through the mud on black Twitter or you know anywhere else online so I hope you've enjoyed this video you can find me online um, pretty much on all of the social platforms at D Nairi. I don't know if these will become a regular thing videos not really my um, not really my thing but if I have something to say, I'll definitely jump on and share with you guys either here on my YouTube page or I will share on my Medium profile, which is also at DNIRE. So hopefully I'll be talking to you guys more soon and let me know what you think about this video in the comments. Let me know what you think about the situation if you are not burned out from talking about it and I will talk to you guys soon.